Ladies and gentlemen, the wait is finally over. We have a brand new Halo Mega Constructs blind bag series, and we're here today to break down these beautiful images. It has been a long time in the making. We've been speculating wildly about what this blind bag series will be. We had it confirmed a little while ago that it was going to be a Halo Infinite blind bag series, and we have images to talk about at long last, and they're pretty fantastic. Like, I I'm really excited about this one for some very obvious obvious reasons and then some more subtle reasons. I know a couple of these figures have the community a little divided on color choices, but I actually really like them and we're going to break them down one by one. So hello once again, YouTube, and welcome back to The Domain. I want to apologize to begin with that my throat, uh, I, I sound pretty bad. I probably also look a little rough. I literally got back from my brother's stag do, my brother's bachelor party about uh, an hour ago. Mega thankfully provided me with some of these really high quality images. Podcast Evolved will also be breaking down these images. So I'll make sure to link his video in the comments description and the end card of this video. So I'm sure you'll be able to check it out. So Halo Mega Constructs has a really good rhythm of releasing a blind bag series every six months. They've gone through so many different changes over the years. Series one to nine, Alpha to Foxtrot, Clash on the Ring, a new Dawn Battle for the Ark. There's been so many. So Halo Infinite has had three blind bag series so far, each with a micro build, each with an AC, and they've all had a lot to offer. They've all been solid. They've all had good army building, introduced some new molds, particularly the Victor the Grunt. That was the first time we saw him. They've all been pretty decent. I also like in series three, how they just got the new Fred and Kelly molds and they just use them for the blind bags. That was great. And then the world was, I think, taken by surprise when we didn't get Halo Infinite Series 4 blind bags. When the next blind bag series rolled around, it was Halo Universe. And I remember when I talked about these for the first time, I was at Hong Kong Disneyland. Yeah, it was a pretty great series. There was one thing which we have to talk about before we even get into the figures. They had downgraded to only six, uh, which I don't like. Like, I really, really don't like that. Blind bags only come out every six months. You know, blind bags are trying to appeal to everybody. So maybe you don't like some of the figures in a blind bag series. So to only get six and then wait another six months is rough. The fact that we got Halo Universe after Halo Infinite Series 3, and now we're getting Halo Infinite Series 4, I could probably assume that spring of next year we'll get Halo Universe Series 2. So the question is... Are they going to cycle it every six months doing a Halo Universe and a Halo Infinite blind bag series? And if they do do that, is it literally just six each one? Basically only 12 blind bag figures a year. That is a very rough downgrade from eight to six. And we've had uh, even better than that in the past with chase figures. So it does seem like a step down. Despite that, Halo Universe Series 1 blind bags were awesome. The Spartan Aster and half transitioning AC was great. But then the Halo 2 Marine and the Halo 2 Brute Holy cow, they are so good. The Brute is like my favorite figure right now. Like it is my favorite figure that I own right now. So a very impressive series, but a genuine concern that the figure count have gone down to six. And now we've seen Halo Infinite Series 4 blind bags. I think we can assume that the six figure count is here to stay. Luckily for us, Mega is very good at listening. So if we do voice our concerns about dropping down to a six figure count, I think they will listen. And if you have an opinion you want to leave in the comments down below, about the figure count, please do. And hopefully we can get through to them if you think that's something we need to change. But right, without further ado, let's introduce Halo Infinite Series 4 because there's a lot to talk about here and a lot of very good things to talk about. The first interesting thing is it seems we've got a new base plate for one of the figures. And I guess now I've mentioned that base plate, we'll talk about that figure first. It's definitely the one that will get people the most hyped. It's a buildable Sentinel. And that's crazy because like I say that Mega listens and they really do. I've seen a lot of conversation recently in the community about the fact that we've not had a new Sentinel. Cause like Halo Infinite literally brought Sentinels back and we didn't get any Sentinels in new sets. And the last time we got a Sentinel was probably with the Enforcer in the Battlescape 3, which is an ancient set at this point. We got a tiny Sentinel that came with the Forge Hog, but really we've been completely dry. To get a Sentinel after that has been a discussion. Back in spring of 2022, they said that they'd finished the Halo Heroes for 2023 spring. So I would assume they finished these figures off last 
fall, maybe, because these are going to come out this fall. So it's wild that everyone was talking about the Sentinels. I hope Mega's been seeing the conversation online and just been smirking to themselves, thinking just you wait, because that is a really beautiful Sentinel. And the micro builds, you know, they're not for everyone, for sure. The Banished Phantom, Pelican, we've had Spirit of Fire forward into Dawn. I've loved them, but yeah, they have a limit to what you can do with them, particularly in dioramas, unless you're Brickman 117, of course. But this micro Sentinel is pretty much in scale with your characters, and you can legitimately use this. Like, I... I need 50. I, I, I need 100. <laughs> like, they're so good. It's always been a shame to me. I've only got, like, one or two Sentinels, and I've always wanted more. And I don't think they're even complete. So this is... I mean, it makes the Blind Bike series awesome to begin with. We haven't even talked about the other five figures, but this Sentinel is legendary. It seems like the obvious choice when you see it. The Sentinel, uh, we can assume that is probably the ultra rare, but we don't know just yet. And maybe we can assume that the rare is the Jackal Sniper. What is worse than a Jackal Sniper? An AC Jackal Sniper, of course. You wonder why the Covenant or the Banished wouldn't give AC units to the, the Jackals. That just makes sense to me. But yeah, we got a Jackal Sniper in AC. Unfortunately, still no Stalker Rifle. He's using a Beam Rifle. And I think it might be some time until we get more uh you know mega talks about their budget every year for making weapons I really do think that they need to get a move on with introducing new weapons. Obviously, we can see in these blind bags there is a new weapon, um, so I'm not trying to hate on it, but I, I do think that there are so many new weapons in Infinite that it is time that Mega starts churning them out. Particularly, like, we need at least two every uh, half a year, maybe four a year. Particularly, like, we could get the Spiker and the Disruptor. There are so many, so... Oh, even the Scrap Cannon. Like, let's start to introduce more. In saying that, we do have a Ravager in this series, so I'm not complaining too much. Yes, the Jackal comes with a AC beam rifle. Yeah, Mega have always been a little more relaxed on which weapons are included in which series. Uh, you know, the Halo Infinite series, or what, what do we have here? Definitely some weapons that are not in the game. Yeah, the Plasma Repeater, the Carbine, not in the game. So definitely they have a bit more of a relaxed ruling on what's canonical in Halo Infinite sets. A little more so than probably Jazzware does. The Jackal Sniper in the Gungoose Gambit is awesome, so I'm happy to see that they're using the mold. Mega do like to do that, like they, uh, they had the Brute Chieftain in series three they had the trailblazer in series two both ac and they clearly like to use their ac when they've got new molds then we've got four other figures very interesting choices very interesting choices i wouldn't be surprised if the anubis is the other rare and yes it is a zombie Anubis. Very surprising that we have a zombie, a sort of Last Man Standing S. I don't want to say Last Man Standing because we have Last Spartan Standing, that's not zombies, but a zombie-esque glow-in-the-dark Anubis. Really interesting choice because we haven't had many, but we did get a glow-in-the-dark figure in the... What was it called? It was one of the helmets. I think it, I think it was the Last Man Standing helmet. I think it was called Last Man Standing helmet. We did get another AC figure, so cool to see that they're keeping on going with that. And he comes with that green energy sword, which I know the community really loves. I'll get a few of those for sure. Pretty much all of these, actually. I, I, actually, all of them, maybe minus the recon, I guess. But all of them, really, I'll buy quite a few of. Very good selection for army building, for sure. I feel like my voice is going more and more. <laughs> I need to hurry up with this video. Okay. A lot to talk about, you know. A lot to talk about, right? So I would assume that the ultra rare is the sentinel the rares are the jackal and the anubis and we've got three commons assumingly uh we'll go over the grunt assault i mentioned that i really like the grunt assault in series one so good to see him coming back and i love that he's got uh the buildable studs on his backpack that match his mask so i do see that the mask might have less painted detail than the series one on the series one blind by grunt it had a blue circle around its uh ox methane mask I guess you call it a methane mask. Seems like it's not present here, which is a bit of a downgrade, but still, I like to see that grunt. And the purple matching the plasma pistol is also very cool. Then we've got a marine, which I've seen the community a little bit divided online. Some really like the colors, some really don't. I really like the colors. And I think the marine has the same uh, mask that the marine from the banished garrison pack has, which is like you only see his eyes. So I would love to be able to army build that to death. Basically just a re-imagining uh, of the Halo infinite series one marine and i guess series three marine with the female head but it's still great and it comes with a black commando which is a nice different color and then the speckled effects on his arms and legs does look really good the knee pads as well are a different color nice touch a full gloved hand not so bad and then especially i like the visor very nice sort of bronze color quite bright it's more covert ops it's more spec ops i run covert ops looking spartans in all of my halo infinite lineups really like it so i really respect that they've done a different color palette and that they've used the new head mold from the Banished Garrison pack. 
it's a big win for me. That leaves one more figure, the Recon. Very interesting color choice. I like it. I like all the interesting kind of neon approaches, like any kind of vibrant colors I, I am on board with. So this Recon looks good. The visor looks good. It matches the Marine, which is a nice touch. Then he has the Ravager, which they put right at the middle of that packaging just to make it clear to everybody. Oh, I just noticed something. Wow, that Jackal has blue lights on its mask. That is a nice touch. Hey, I didn't notice that to begin with. That's nice. That's very nice. Okay, the Recon. Green, interesting color choice, but I like that sort of speckled effect on the bottom parts of his limbs. And he comes with a nice looking Ravager front and center on the images. Uh, it looks huge, which is great. I'm really looking forward to seeing some painted versions. I hope there is one in Halo Heroes soon. That would be really cool. What a solid series, honestly. What a solid series. I like that they've also... Finally moved away from the plain green uh, sort of, what do you call it, field? All the product imaging for Infinite has just been in like a field with some rocks and they've moved away from it, which I do respect. The whole blind bag series in general, I would give it like a solid... See, it earns massive points in some regards and loses points in other regards. I, I can't help not thinking about the fact that it's eight figures down to six, which is a big shame. The figures themselves, awesome. We always have to have a grunt in our series. That's just lore at this point. You know, it, but they could have cutted it out with a brute and an elite as well. They really could have for very little money as well. We could have had that new brute captain mold. We could have had a brute miner. We could have had an elite... Uh, general, we could, uh, yeah, we could have definitely padded that out to eight figures, so that is a shame. It is a quality looking series. That buildable Sentinel just elevates it to a hundred out of a hundred. You know what I mean? Like, I want that Sentinel so bad. <laughs> it looks really great. And you could also switch out the stud with a red stud from the Guilty Spark to make him an angry Sentinel. I'm really looking forward to army building that. Uh, stay tuned. There will be a domain video in the next six months. Army building Sentinels, 100% that will happen. The AC Jackal has even more points. Now I've seen it has painted accessory lights on uh, his head piece. Uh, the AC Beam Rifle could have been a Stalk Rifle. That is a shame, but we do get the Ravager with the Recon. And that Marine is probably one of, maybe my second favorite figure as well with that mask. The Zombie Anubis is just a fun addition. I want more zombies all the time, so bring it on. All in all, let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'm pretty hyped about this series. It's gonna retail for, you know, your average $3 and it will come out this fall, maybe around September time. And it's gonna be a really fun time. Maybe it'll come out just in time for uh, Halo Infinite Series 3. Uh, yeah, that is a long way. Thank you very much for tuning in today. This was another video with The Domain. As always, you stay awesome, you stay safe out there, folks. And The Domain is signing off.